Hello everyone, it's Greg from Edinburgh Renaissance Fencing Academy here with another historical fencing video. However, today's video is going to be a bit of a break from my normal theme of uh, Degrassi's 16th century swordsmanship. Today we're going to focus on a different Italian fencing master, Ridolfo Capoferro, um, whose system dates from the early 17th century. So he's a little bit later. He's basically the next generation of master after uh, Degrassi's generation. Um, he's still using basically the same weapon. So it's a long, heavy rapier uh, with a swept hilt. Um, but he has a very different approach to using this weapon and a very different set of body mechanics uh, driving it. So Capoferro has a, a very linear approach to fencing compared to the 16th century systems. Uh, and he drives all his attacks from, uh, from the vita, from the waist, and from the back leg. Uh, as opposed to Degrassi, who's more throwing the attacks from the upper uh, torso from, from this area. So Degrassi uh, punching or throwing the attack from this upper torso movement, uh, while Capoferro is driving them from down here, um, pushing them forwards from the back leg through the waist. Something like that. In order to be able to control this long heavy weapon correctly, uh, you need to train and condition your body in the correct postures and the correct way of moving for Capoferro. So that's what we're going to look at today is, is how to achieve that. So first of all, um, you need to understand that there are kind of two different sets of posture which Capoferro uses as described in his book. Um, there's a, a more defensive stance, and then there's a more threatening offensive stance. Um, but alongside that, you have to understand that there are four different hand positions that you can hold the sword in. So let's actually start with the hand positions. So these are quite simply a first position where the hand is like this. Uh, so first or prima. Second position, seconda, like this third or terza like this and fourth or quarta like this okay so these are the hand positions so we're just interested in what the hand's doing to start with so that's prima seconda terza and quarta first second third and fourth but when you actually have a sword in your hand and you're trying to do techniques, uh, you have to support those positions and you have to support this big heavy weapon by using the correct body stance. So um, the, the body stance is relatively low and long. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how this works by looking at uh, second, third and fourth positions. We're going to ignore first because it's not used that often for fighting. It's more just the stance you end up in when you first draw your sword, but you usually move straight out of that into one of the other three stances. So essentially, um, if I face this direction, our uh, third posture, terza, looks something like this. So this is the defensive one where the weight is back here. Uh, the head and upper torso are also held over the back leg uh, and the sword's partly extended but not fully extended out in front so it's something like this if we compare that with uh, the other two postures they are much more threatening so i'm going to change from third into second so i'm going to move my hand to my outside line and i'm going to counterbalance that by kind of shifting the shoulders and the head around and slightly forwards the weight's still on the back leg when, I, when I'm in that posture, um, but the head and shoulders are kind of moving around like this to counterbalance what the hand's doing. So here's terza, here's seconda. And you can also shuffle your front foot slightly out to the side in order to stabilize that if necessary. So looking straight forwards, Here's terza, a defensive posture. 
excusa conda, a threatening or offensive posture. So the shift in stance is basically driven from here, from the vita. The same thing can be seen when we change from terza to quarta, which is a, a threatening posture, a threatening stance, but on the other line, so it's on the inside line. So I'll show the same shift in profile and then looking towards the camera. So here's our position of terza, it's defensive with the, the head and the torso a little back, and then I shift to quarta like so. So again, the head and the shoulders have kind of counterbalanced what the sword hand's doing to end up here. And again, you can shift the front foot slightly towards the inside line to support that movement if necessary. So here's terza, here's quarta. Terza, quarta. And then facing the camera, same movement. Here's terza, quarta. So practicing shifting between these three stances uh, is a pretty good workout and a pretty good way of getting a feeling for how the, the mechanics of Capoferro's uh, rapier system work. Um, it's also a really good workout for, for your abs, for your glutes, uh, and for your thighs as well. So from a, uh, from a fitness um, perspective, it's a good thing to do. So let's just finish off by showing you that exercise uh, with a sword in hand. So here's me in my defensive terza posture. Here's me in my more aggressive seconda posture back to terza and into quarta and you could just practice shifting between these stances taking care to do the bulk of the work from the vita and uh, keep the sword arm as relaxed as possible so the sword arm should always be partially extended, but not fully extended. So we don't want to be crushed in like this, where the sword's not really that threatening to the opponent. But we don't want to lock our arms out here where the weight of the sword is going to fatigue our arm um, and start to work against us. So we need to have that compromise in the middle. So that's a nice little conditioning exercise you can do um, just to start thinking about the, the core mechanics and the core principles of the Capoferro 17th century approach to the rapier. I hope you found that video uh, interesting. I uh, hope it makes for a nice contrast with the, the Degrassi system, which is my normal theme. Uh, I'll return in the near future with uh, one or two more videos just looking at some simple training exercises you can do for conditioning yourself for Capoferro Rapier. Uh, however, that's all for today. Um, take care everyone and I'll see you again soon.